From the Rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Hello everybody, I'm Kyle Macy. While the ticket in the upper deck of Rupp Arena may not be the best seat to watch the Wildcats, the rafters of Rupp are a prime location for jerseys and championship banners. To have your jersey hanging from the rafters of Rupp is the ultimate when it comes to Kentucky basketball lore. Throughout this series of shows, you'll hear from members of that legendary group as they give you a first-hand account while their jerseys hang from the rafters of Rupp. In this episode, I visit with Jack Givens, the smooth shooting lefty known as Goose. Jack grew up in Lexington, Kentucky and attended Bryan Station High School where he was named Kentucky's Mr. Basketball in 1974. During our conversation, I first asked Jack about his recruitment to UK, what it was like to join the very talented Kentucky squad in 74 and 75, two memorable matchups with the number one ranked Indiana Hoosiers and Kentucky's run to the 1975 NCAA championship game. Well, a lot of people ask me that, and of course the coaches. Uh, Dickie Parsons, I remember him um, uh, touching base with me early, early on in my career. Of course, Leonard Hamilton later on uh, in my uh, high school career was there. Joe B, of course, was, uh, was always around. Uh, but, you know, playing in, in Lexington specifically, but anywhere in the state of Kentucky, I mean, we would travel, and it, it didn't really matter where we went, whether it was Hazard, Kentucky, Mount Sterling, Kentucky, whether it was Richmond or Harrodsburg or Carroll County, Carrollton, uh, wherever we went, the, the stands were full of just blue shirts, Kentucky blue shirts. I mean, it was blue and white everywhere. And I tell people, I, and probably James Lee also, being from right here in Lexington at that time, uh, I probably was the easiest recruiting job that the coaching staff ever had because I was recruited every night by the fans. I mean, they let me know immediately. I mean, I'm talking about every game. They let me know that they wanted me at the University of Kentucky. Now, Roby pretty quickly moved into the starting lineup. So he was there with Guyat at the uh, four spot, uh, Roby at center, Guyat, then you had Greeby at the three, and you had Jimmy Dan and Mike Flynn. Those were the starting five. Soon I, I became kind of the sixth man on that team. Uh, so I would play a lot with the, with the varsity's uh, team as well, uh, with those seniors. But um, I mean, working against Kevin Greeby every day, I'm telling you, it, it is amazing. Uh, Greeb was one of my favorites. So to get a chance to work with him every day was really, really good on one hand, but it was tough on the other because I was playing against the best player on the team. The score was probably a 20, 25 point game, but that was the good part of the game. The, uh, all the other stuff, the hitting with the forearm and the moving screens and uh, grabbing your jersey and pulling you down, all of these things that uh, you're not supposed to do in a non-contact sport, they were doing. And uh, I, I remember that one of my first shots, I went in to shoot it, and I thought, man, I'm going to go in here and get this one. And Scott May just went up and blocked my shot, slapped it. It went out. It landed about half court. Buckner picks it up, throws it to Wilkerson. He goes down and slams it. And I'm running down the court beside Scott May, and he looks over at me, and he says, boy, I said, don't you bring that weak stuff in here no more. <laughs> and I said, and I thought, oh, I'm just a little kid from Lexington, man. What are you doing to me? Uh, I mean, but that's the way it was. Not just uh, infamous, and, and, but it helped define our team for the rest of the year. Number one, we wanted to play them again because they totally spanked us the first time we played them. So we wanted to play them again, um, which was a good thing. Um, and then... Uh, Coach Hall had a, a, a confidence about him. In the locker room before the game, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's been said, I mean, and it was true. I mean, he put three or four points up on the board, was his whole pregame speech. Uh, 
Number one, he said, if they set an illegal screen, you're going to hit them back. Number two, we're going to win this game. Number three, he said, guys, you really, really need to be careful with those scissors because when you go up and cut these nets down, I don't want any cuts on the fingers because we're going to have to play here in another week. So just make sure when you're cutting those nets down that you don't cut your fingers over, so be careful. And number four, he said, when we get to the state line and you see all this, just a fleet of police cars there, don't be scared. They're just gonna escort us to, uh, to the Coliseum where we're gonna have a hellacious celebration and we're gonna enjoy this. I mean, that's all he said. He said, now go play ball. For the seniors on the team, uh, I mean, I, I wish that was the Final Four game. That was the championship game. Because for them, uh, that was the championship. Having a chance to play them again and beating that uh, team that spanked us so badly. I mean, I still see Mike Flynn up on that ladder with those nets, holding them up, shaking those nets. I mean, I still see that like it was yesterday. It was just a great feeling. But that, that kind of told everybody what we felt at that time. I mean, we were uh, ecstatic that we had won that game. I thought the thing that was going to be the big difference was that we were playing in San Diego, uh, which is an hour and a half, two hours from Los Angeles. Uh, I knew that was going to be a factor because UCLA would have all their people there. And of course, they were good. I mean, they had won championships and uh, everybody knew UCLA. So uh, I thought that would be the biggest factor. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the retirement. Uh, looking back on it, of course, it did make a difference. Uh, and that might have been the thing that got them over the edge because uh, we played well. And I still think had we played anywhere other than San Diego, we would have won that game. UCLA's Hall of Fame coach John Wooden announced his retirement prior to that 75 championship game and Kentucky fell to the Bruins 92-85. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Jack Givens. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. In Jack's junior year, the Wildcats posted a 26-4 record, were ranked in the top five of the country for most of the season, but the year ended in disappointment with a loss to North Carolina in the finals of the East Regional. Jack talked to me about how that loss affected the team and impacted their preparation for his senior year. Well, um, you know, North Carolina, again, was a good team. I mean, we were a couple of the top teams in the country, no question about that. Um, uh, they had a, a player by the name of Phil Ford, who was a really good little point guard who could handle, uh, he could get the ball from one end of the floor to the other very quickly. Um, he was a uh, good scorer. Uh, O'Corn was there. They had a, a, a lot of pretty good players. Uh, Sweet D, Walter Davis might have been on that team as well. Um, but we were still very confident going into that game. I mean, we thought we would win that ball game. Uh, the problem is we got behind early and they were uh, famous for running their four corner offense. and. Uh, at the time, there wasn't a shot clock, so Phil Ford could dribble, and you know, if you couldn't take the ball from him, you were kind of at their mercy. But, uh, but we lost that one, and, and I blame you for that, frankly. I blame you for uh, the fact that we didn't win a championship that year, because had you done what you were supposed to do and come to Kentucky immediately, you wouldn't have had to be sitting out that year. So uh, I blame you for that, that we didn't get to the championship and win that one. Oh, it, it, it really got us going for the next year. I mean, uh, we worked as hard that summer as we had ever worked any summer previously. I mean, we were playing basketball every day. Uh, everything we could do, we did. We came in for uh, our preseason training, and um, we did this thing uh, three days a week. We would run from the Coliseum to the track on the other side of the campus. And we would do the, the series of 220 uh, sprints. And it was extremely tough. I mean, I'm talking about 
real, real difficult to do. I mean, there were a lot of garbage, garbage cans positioned uh, around the track in just the right spot because there was some deposits going into that garbage can, believe me. And then we go up and we start working with Pat Atchebury, who uh, uh, introduced to all of the guys, including myself, what weightlifting was all about. I mean, I had never lifted weights much, but Pat Atchebury, uh, he was a little sadistic. He, he, he got pleasure out of seeing guys hurt pumping those weights, man. I mean, he was a great guy and a fun guy to work with, but if you didn't leave hurting, he felt like he wasn't earning his money. Kentucky began the 77-78 season with 15 consecutive wins and held the number one ranking in the country, but it took road losses at Alabama and LSU and a halftime speech at Ole Miss from Coach Joe B. Hall to refocus this team and propel the Wildcats to the SEC championship and much, much more. Here's Jack's account of some of the memorable moments of that season and the challenges the 78 team faced in the NCAA tournament. We went in there at halftime and, uh, and I usually tried to sit right up front row, right in the middle, uh, because I knew I was going to hear it, uh, whether I played well or not. But I, I, and man, he, he rode me, I'm thinking the entire halftime. I mean, he was in my face, and, and, and James, you missed a, uh, missed a rebound, but you shouldn't have missed a shot. He wouldn't have missed, you know, I mean, it was one of those kind of, uh, one of those kind of games uh, and halftime speeches that you, you want to just uh, kind of get out of there as quickly as possible. He told me about five or six times, go look in the mirror. <laughs> Fabulous five, fiddling five, and we're the folding five. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, fortunately, we went on to win that ball game, but, but it was a tough game. I do know that I didn't start the second half, and I, and I got the message. I mean, I hadn't played well, and I don't know why. Some, sometimes you have a bad game, but um, fortunately, we had a deep enough team where, you know, you could put other guys in and get it done. I mean, James started that second half, and, you know, uh, we had guys who could still play. And you did a great job. And um, we got back in the game. And I think when I came back in, I had a different attitude, a different approach, and played a lot better uh, than I'd played in the first half. Yeah, I had Magic, uh, and, and he's a great player. There's no question about that. Uh, and, and they played us uh, as well as anybody had played us all year. I mean, they were a tough matchup, as you can imagine. but. Uh, fortunately, we had a guy by the name of Cal Macy who could make free throws. And uh, when they got in a situation where they had to foul someone and we needed someone to make a shot, not just free throws, but make a big shot, uh, you had the big game and, and kind of helped us to get through that. But that was one of the real neat things about our march through the tournament that year. We just kind of had guys uh, to get it done along the way, a different guy would step up and make the plays. With the 52-49 win over the fourth-ranked Michigan State Spartans in the Elite Eight at Dayton, Ohio, the Cats headed to St. Louis for the Final Four. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Jack Givens. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. I asked Jack if the experience from going to the Final Four in his freshman year helped in 78. I was also curious about his thoughts regarding the national media's claim that this Kentucky team was too serious, playing under too much pressure from their coaches and not having any fun. I think you'll agree with me, but that focus was uh, generated by, by the guys and not so much the coaching staff. Now they took the hit and Coach Hall didn't mind uh, all of that attention coming to him because it took, it, took the pressure off of us. But, we knew we were good enough to win a championship and we didn't want anything less than that. Oh, it made a difference because when we were in San Diego, I mean, we did everything. I mean, we saw everything there was to see. I mean, we went to the beach. Uh, we, I mean, we did everything that you can do in a place as gorgeous as San Diego. Um, so, so we did have fun out there and we did 
uh, try to make the most of the trip. But, uh, uh, but we didn't want to do that again. I mean, we knew what that was like. I mean, we didn't, not that uh, St. Louis is San Diego with the beach and everything, but um, it, it just wasn't the same approach for us that it was my freshman year. Kentucky met Eddie Sutton's Arkansas Razorbacks in the semifinal matchup. Jack discussed the late game play that sealed the victory, then shares with me personal moments leading up to the championship game, his historic performance against Duke, and the qualities that made the 78 team so special. We called Rick, which, is, which means uh, Roby, uh, we both line up at the free throw line. Roby comes over and sets the screen, uh, and the team thinks I'm coming back to the ball, but in reality, I'm just going over the screen and I'm slipping down the floor, and you throw the pass long, and you nailed me right in stride. Now, a lot of people say I traveled on that I was play. Ask you, right? Yeah, you know, and I've watched that replay at least once, and I know I did not travel. But a lot of people said I traveled. But uh, it's not a violation if the referee doesn't call it. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> but, but the play worked perfectly, and that was the play that uh, iced the game for us and uh, got us over the hump in that game. As it gets closer to game time, you, you, you can't do anything but think about the game. You try your best all day not to even think about it. But yeah, you know, we, uh, you can't sleep. So you have to lay there and talk. And, and James, he called me give. He said, give, can you believe, man, we're here again? I said, James, I cannot believe it, man. And he said, give, what are we gonna do, man? What are we gonna do? And, and uh, I said, big James, I think we can know only one thing, and that is win the game, man. I mean, during the course of the game, and you, you'll know what I'm talking about, I mean, you're just playing. You're just doing what you do uh, and trying your best to do it well. And uh, I frankly had no clue how many points I had. I mean, I knew I was having a good game, but, you know, I thought 30 points would have been a great night if I'd ended up with 30, uh, which I thought was about where I was. Uh, but I wondered why they, they weren't changing anything. I mean, you know, um, I mean, it was open all night and, and we didn't do anything. I mean, it's not like we were geniuses or anything. I mean, it was just the open spot on the floor and it just so happened that it was my job to fill those open spots and it was in my range and where I like to get most of my shots. I mean, we didn't do anything really different or we didn't change anything. They didn't make any changes, so we didn't make any changes. But uh, yeah, I was real shocked that they didn't. Uh, and I saw Bill Foster a couple times after that, and he said, uh, are you finally going to uh, say thanks to me for not making a change and not taking the ball out of your hands? I said, Coach, I said thanks to you all the time it was going on, you know. Uh, so, so I don't think t uh, folks really understood how good that team was, how many truly talented players we had on that ball club. Um, but that's okay. I mean, I, I think... Uh, uh, when you have a, a, a place in the record books and you got an NCAA championship, 1978 NCAA championship beside your name, um, I think people understand uh, just by that that they must have been a pretty good team. But we had good guys on that team. But I think the thing that really made the difference that we were committed um, to stopping teams from scoring. Defense was Regardless of how we shot the ball, and we shot it well, we defended every night, and that's what was the big difference. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. That 78 Kentucky team was certainly one of the greatest Wildcat teams of all time, and I'm honored to be a part of that group that brought the fifth NCAA National Championship back to Lexington. While we did have great players, Jack takes a moment to give credit to our outstanding coaching staff and then shares what it means to have his jersey hanging from the rafters of Rupp Arena. Uh, Dickie Parsons was, uh, he was uh, just a, a great, great, great guy who always, regardless of the situation, had the right thing to say at the right time. 
Leonard Hamilton was the best recruiter ever and still is uh, coaching at Florida State. And he was very good one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, he'd come and take us to the side or he'd get us after practice and come on, walk to the car with me, you know. And he, by the time you left the building, got to the car, you felt better about everything. So uh, we had two very, very, very talented assistant coaches who uh, knew their role as well and performed it uh, very, very well. I think if you look at legends, uh, uh, coaching-wise, uh, quote-unquote legendary coaches, uh, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find one who was as successful following that legendary coach as Coach Hall was. I think Coach Hall was a much better coach than he ever got credit for. Fortunately, he finally got in the Hall of Fame. Took way too long. Uh, but uh, but I, I didn't love playing for Coach Hall, but I think Coach Hall didn't want us to love playing for him. That was his way of coaching, and, and he did a good job of getting the most out of each one of us, uh, whether we liked the method or not. There are certain things that uh, really mean a lot, uh, accolades you get. Um, some, after a while, most of them kind of go away and they don't carry the same weight as they once did, but seeing your name up in the rafters and number 21, it's really, really special. Uh, it speaks to our generation, but it also speaks to those young guys who are out there playing basketball now, who uh, look up there every now and then, they see the banners, and they see the names, and they don't know who we are. Uh, they don't know Cal Macy, they don't know Jack Givens, they don't know Dan Issel, but they do know that they have their jerseys up there, so they are very special. So that's one of the things that still uh, I carry with high regard, being, uh, re having a, my number retired up there, my jersey, and being in the rafters. That's, that's still very special. Jack Givens ended his career second on the all-time scoring list at the University of Kentucky with 2,038 points. He was a three-time All-SEC performer as well as an All-American selection and voted the 1978 Helms National Player of the Year. Jack was also the most outstanding player in the 78 NCAA Final Four after leading the Wildcats to that championship. After an illustrious collegiate career, Jack was selected in the first round of the 1978 NBA Draft with the 16th pick by the Atlanta Hawks. After his playing days ended, Jack became a successful broadcaster, working for Jefferson Pilot, ESPN, TNT, and a long stint with the Orlando Magic. In recent years, Jack and his wife Linda have moved back to central Kentucky, right where he belongs. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, when we hear more tales from the rafters of Rupp. From the rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.